Ukraine is pressing through with its counter-offensive on the Eastern Front Line. Ukrainian troops fired artillery shells as infantry soldiers attacked Russian bunkers. Intense fighting continues around the eastern city of Bakhmut. Life remains normal in Moscow after the Wagner Group stopped its rebellion against the Russian government. On Saturday, Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin and his fighters mutinied against the Russian government. Wagner convoys were headed towards Moscow when a deal was struck. Under the agreement, the Wagner chief along with his troops will be given residence in Belarus. The deal was brokered by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. The Australian government has announced a military aid package worth $74 million for Ukraine. This will include armoured vehicles, trucks and ammunition. Australia will also give Ukraine duty-free access to its markets for the next 12 months. This will be done to support and boost Ukraine's economy. Russian fighter jets dropped bombs on a market in the northwestern Syrian city of Idlib. At least nine people were killed and over 30 were injured in the airstrikes. Russian officials have claimed that they were attacking rebel insurg insurgent groups. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has returned from Egypt. On Sunday, PM Modi met Egypt's President Abdel Fateh el-Sisi. The two leaders signed a joint declaration to upgrade bilateral relations. Egypt also conferred the Indian Prime Minister with the Order of Nile Award. Order of Nile is Egypt's highest state honour. Chinese Premier Li Chiang met Vietnam's Prime Minister Pham Min Chin in Beijing on Monday. The leaders signed three agreements regarding trade, environmental protection and high-tech border securing systems. This is the first official visit by a Vietnamese Prime Minister to China in seven years. Meanwhile, New Zealand's Prime Minister Chris Hipkins also arrived in China's capital Beijing. This is his first visit to China since becoming New Zealand's Prime Minister in January this year. Hipkins was invited by Chinese Premier Li Chiang. Mongolia's Prime Minister has also arrived in Beijing. The leaders, the leaders rather, will attend World Economic Forum's annual meeting called Summer Davos Forum. This year's Summer Davos will be held in China's Xinjiang from June 27th to the 29th of June. Over 1,500 people protested outside NATO's Ramstein Air Base in Germany. They called for peace and demanded the withdrawal of the US military from German bases. Currently, over 15,000 US military personnel serve in Ramstein. The Ramstein Air Base is the largest US military base overseas. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis' party won the general elections on Sunday. Mitsotakis' conservative party won with a landslide margin. He will now serve as the Greek Prime Minister for another four years. Former US President Donald Trump held an election rally in the state of Michigan. Trump attacked President Biden and slammed his environmental policies. Trump said, and I quote, Biden is a catastrophe for Michigan. Trump is leading the Republican nomination race for the 2024 presidential elections. Thousands marched in an anti-US rally in North Korea's capital, Pyongyang. At least 120,000 North Koreans pledged revenge against what they called an imperialist America. Demonstrators even held signs that read, the US is within North Korea's shooting range. The rally was held as North Korea marked its 73rd anniversary of the start of the Korean War. South Korea's government aims to curb the country's spending on private education. This comes after South Korea's President Yoon Suk Yul criticized college entrance tests for having questions not part of the syllabus. Yoon blamed private colleges for making it difficult for public school students to crack the entrance exams. South Korea's education minister has vowed to crack down on the private coaching institutions. Last year, South Koreans spent a whopping $20 billion on private education. Myanmar's military torched illicit drugs worth $180 million on Monday. The drugs were seized from various regions across Myanmar over a year. The military also held an anti-drug awareness campaign for locals. According to UN reports, opium cultivation in Myanmar jumped by 33% last year. 
Moving to climate, Montreal city has recorded the worst air quality in the world due to smoke from the Canadian wildfires. The Quebec province issued a health advisory as air quality dropped to unhealthy levels. Officials urge the residents of Montreal to stay indoors. Currently, there are over 80 wildfires in Canada's Quebec province. Canada will deploy additional firefighters in Quebec to control the flames. Spain is scorching under a severe heat wave. Barcelona residents cooled off at the beach after temperatures crossed 40 degrees Celsius. The Spanish Weather Agency has estimated the heat wave to last until Wednesday this week. Spain has recorded its hottest spring this year since 1961. The UK is also witnessing a heat wave. Residents in southern England flock to beaches as temperatures cross 30 degrees Celsius. Brighton city officials even encourage residents to cool off in the beach waters. Torrential rains have caused floods in China's southern provinces. Firefighters rescued at least 17 people stranded in floods in China's Anhui province. Chinese officials have sounded a flood alert in the southern region through this week. At least two people have died in floods in the South American country of Chile. Over 400 homes have been swept away in landslides caused by heavy rainfall. The government has declared a flood emergency in Chile's central regions. The torrential rains just come weeks after Chile witnessed a severe drought. A tornado ripped through buildings in the US state of Indiana. At least one person was killed as powerful winds decimated houses. Several others were injured as the twister flung debris of buildings into the air. I think it's gonna miss us. Hundreds of anti-coal activists marched in Germany's eastern regions. The protesters demanded an early phasing out of coal in order to comply with the Paris Climate Agreement. They also demanded the government to restrict coal mining to 205 million tons by 2038. In business, a German public sector union has called for a 48-hour strike at Amazon facilities. This is at warehouses in the country's eastern city of Leipzig. The workers are asking for a collective labour agreement. This includes increasing wages by nearly $3 per hour for 12 months. They also want a $270 wage hike for apprentices. Belgian authorities have ordered cryptocurrency exchange Binance to seize operations in the country. It has been accused of providing services in Belgium from countries that are not members of the European Economic Area. This is the latest blow for the crypto firm. Earlier this month, US authorities sued the company over illegal business practices. Key investors have resigned from the board of India's most valuable edtech startup, Baiju's. This includes investment company Prospus and Facebook-owned Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Representatives of Peak15 Partners, which was formerly known as Sikoi India, have also left. This comes shortly after the departure of its auditor Deloitte. Indian technology firm Infosys has signed a contract with Denmark's Dance Bank. This is worth over $400 million. Infosys will help digitize the bank's core business and add more cloud and data facilities to it. The IT firm will also acquire Dance's IT center in India. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, expects global oil demand to rise to 111 million barrels per day by the year 2045. This is 23% higher than current levels. The prediction is according to OPEC Plus, or rather OPEC Secretary General, Haitam Al Ghais. He said this during a conference in Malaysia. Rating agency SP Global has cut its China GDP forecast for this year. It now expects the region to grow by 5.2%. This is lower than a previous forecast of 5.5% growth. SP said, and I quote, China's recovery should continue, but at an uneven pace, with investment and industry lagging. The Australian unit of PricewaterCoopers has entered an agreement with private equity firm Allegro Funds. This is to divest the unit's federal and state government business. PwC will sell the businesses to Allegro for one Australian dollar, or 67 cents. This comes after the auditing giant was accused of leaking confidential government data to corporate clients. 
A Nigerian artist is using augmented reality software to breathe life into his paintings. This includes using music, voiceovers, or 3D animation. Visitors at its at his art studio use smartphones to scan a barcode. This allows them to interact with the displayed artwork. The European Union and Facebook parent Meta will test the EU's content rules in July. The EU industry chief Thierry Breton said in a tweet that about a thousand Meta employees are working to implement the Digital Services Act. This is after Bret Breton had earlier demanded that the social media giant protect children from harmful content on its platform. Japan's military is testing Elon Musk's Starlink satellite internet service. The country's self-defense forces have been testing the network for their land, sea, and air forces since March. Reports say it is aiming to officially adopt the technology from April next year. Moving to sports, in cricket, selectors have dropped Indian top-order batsman Cheteshwar Pujara for the two-test tour of the West Indies in July. He was dropped owing to poor form after scoring just 211 runs in his last six test matches. Ruthraj Gaikwad and Yashasvi Jaiswal have made the cut after their stellar performances in this year's IPL. New Zealand's ODI and T20 skipper Kane Williamson wants to play the 2023 World Cup despite an injury. The 32-year-old sustained an injury to his right knee while fielding for Gujarat Titans during an IPL match this year. Williamson said he was making progress in his recovery. German midfielder Ilkay Gundogan has joined La Liga club Barcelona on a two-year deal. He has joined Barcelona on a free transfer from English club Manchester City. Gundogan's release clause has been set at around $435 million. The 32-year-old had an incredibly successful spell at Man City last season. Mexico's CONCACAF Gold Cup opener has come to a great start. Mexico defeated Honduras 4-0 in the group stage on Sunday. Led by interim coach James Lozano, the revamped Mexico team scored in less than a minute to the game. The win has left Mexico on top of Group B of the tournament. Mexico will now face second-placed Haiti on Thursday. In football, Premier League club Chelsea has agreed to sign Villarreal's Nicholas Jackson for over $39 million. The Senegal international is poised to join Chelsea on an eight-year deal. Jackson had been a La Liga sensation last season, scoring 12 goals in his 26 appearances. He had also attracted interest from Aston Villa and Everton, but Chelsea won the race for his signature. India beat Nepal 2-0 to reach the South Asian Football Federation Championship semi-final. The match was played at the Kantirava Stadium in Bengaluru. Indian skipper Sunil Chetri scored his 91st international goal in the 62nd minute of the match. Now Re Mahesh Singh scored the second goal for India in the 70th minute. In tennis, Carlos Alcaraz won the Queen's Club title. With this win, Alcaraz has regained the world number one position. This was his first ever grass title at Queen's in London. The 20-year-old Spaniard beat Australia's Alex de Menor 6-4 and 6-4 to claim his fifth title of the season. In golf, India's Diksha Dagar clinched the Tip Sport Czech Ladies Open on Sunday. This was the 22-year-old's second Ladies European Tour title. Dagar won her first Ladies European Tour title back in 2019. She has now become the second Indian to win in 2023 after Aditi Ashok won the magical Kenya ladies earlier this season. In table tennis, Indian women's duo of Sutirtha and Ahika Mukherjee have won this year's WTT Contender Tunis title. The pair beat their Japanese counterparts 3-1 in the final. With the win, they have become the first Indian table tennis players to clinch a WTT Contender title this year. In Olympics, India concluded its Special Olympics World Games 2023 campaign by winning 202 medals. In total, India won 76 gold, 75 silver and 51 bronze medals. Indian Special Olympics chairperson Dr. Malika Nada highlighted the need for inclusion and acceptance of these athletes by the mainstream. In entertainment, Amber Heard has made her first appearance 
after her highly publicized trial against ex-husband Johnny Depp. The actress walked the red carpet at the 69th Taormina Film Festival in Italy. She was attending attending the premiere of her upcoming film In the Fire. The actress was seen last seen rather in Jack Snyder's Justice League. Tom Cruise starred in Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part 1 has premiered in London. Cruise was joined on the red carpet by his co-stars Simon Pegg, Hayley Atwell and Rebecca Ferguson. Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part 1 is the 7th film in the hit franchise. The full movie of DC's The Flash has been leaked on Twitter. The development comes just to one week into the theatrical run of The Flash. The Super Mario Bros movie suffered the same fate of leaking onto Twitter when it released in April. These leaks became possible after Twitter introduced increased video length and file size limits as a perk for Twitter Blue subscribers. Actor Tom Holland has opened up about how difficult it was to film the crowded room. He added that it affected his mental health. He said and I quote, "It's no secret that my show has been horribly reviewed." Holland joked that his resilience to the criticism stems from being a fan of the Tottenham Soccer Club as they have never won anything. The TV series Warning, which delves into the life of the late Australian cricketer Shane Warne, premiered on Sunday. However, the first episode has received significant backlash on social media. The backlash comes because of a few scenes concerning his relationship with British actress Elizabeth Hurley. Warne died of a heart attack in March 2022 while vacationing in Thailand with his friends. Rapper Young Thug has released his new album from US's Fulton County. Thug has been imprisoned in the Fulton County jail for over a year now. The album Business is Business was released on 23rd of June at midnight. It contains 15 tracks and features from Drake, Lil Gotti, Lil Uzi Vert, 21 Savage and others. Huevo and Offset teamed up for Amigos reunion at the Bet Awards and it was an emotional comeback. The rappers took the stage at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles on Sunday. They paid tribute to their former bandmate Takeoff who died in November. Sunday night marked the first time the two performed together since Takeoff's death. Hollywood actors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney are joining an investor group taking a 24% equity stake in the Alpine Air Racing F1 team. The 218 million dollar deal values British based Alpine Racing at around 900 million dollars following the investment. Alpine finished 4th in the championship last year and are currently 5th after 8 of 22 races. Solange Decker of the Netherlands has claimed the title of Miss International Queen 2023. The Netherlands made history by emerging victorious over 22 contestants. claiming the crown for the first time following closely behind Singapore and the United States secured second and third place respectively in the competition and finally olympic gold medalist turned hollywood stuntman dean smith has passed away aged 91 smith died at his home in breckenridge texas after a battle with cancer smith was born in breckenridge on the 15th of january in 1932 He earned the All-America honors in the 100 meter dash in 1952. We have seen headlines of yet another mass shooting in America, gun terror. We are in Richmond, some 40 miles from Washington DC, and we're here at a shooting range. We'll speak to people here to try to understand why the average American takes up guns. Look at this. This is an ad for a gun. There are about 400 million firearms in the United States. There are about 600,000 negative outcomes. This is the only country I think which has such frequent incidents of school shootings. And when you take 600,000 and you divide it by 400 million, that's a very, 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 very small percentage negative outcome. This is America for you. It's a country which has more guns than people. 